This presentation is for Chapter 14, The Statement of Cash Flows. This is Part 2 of Learning Objective 14.2, Preparing the Statement of Cash Flows by the Indirect Method. In this portion of the second learning objective, we are going to look at the cash flows from financing activities, how to complete the uh, end of the statement of cash flows and the non-cash investing and financing activities. So cash flows from financing activities are going to be determined from the long-term liability and equity accounts such as long-term notes payable, bonds payable, common stock, and retained earnings. And we are going to analyze the T accounts for these long-term liabilities and equity accounts much as we did for the long-term assets for the investing activity section. So first we're going to look at the T account for shop marts notes payable uh, as shown on this slide. When we look at it we can see that notes payable at the beginning of the year was $80,000. During the year we issued new notes payable of $90,000 and we paid off $10,000 of notes payable. So at the end of the year, the balance in notes payable was $160,000. We can use the information from the T account to reconstruct what the journal entries would have looked like for the uh, issuance of the notes payable and the payment to retire notes payable. So these are the journal entries and we can see that when we would have acquired or issued the notes payable, we would have received cash of $90,000. When we paid off $10,000 of notes payable, that would have involved using cash. So we would have debited notes payable and credited cash. So this information can now be used to complete a portion of the financing activity section. As you can see, we separate or show separately cash receipts and cash payments, just as we did in the investing activity section. So first we show cash receipts from issuance of notes payable of 90000 Then we show the cash payment of notes payable as a subtraction of 10000 Next we're going to analyze our equity account. We're going to look at common stock and treasury stock for Shop Mart Inc. When we look at common stock, we see that at the beginning of the year, the balance was $250,000. But during the year, we issued new common shares of $120,000 so that at the end of the year, we had a balance of $370,000. There were no retirements of common stock. The Treasury stock account had a zero balance at the beginning of the year, but during the year we purchased $20,000 of Treasury stock. We had no disposals of Treasury stock, so the balance at the end of the year was $20,000. We can use this information from the T accounts to reconstruct the journal entries for the issuance of the common stock and the purchase of the treasury stock. As shown on this slide, we can see that the journal entry when we issued common stock would have been a debit to cash of $120,000 and a credit to common stock for $120,000. So the new stock issuance represents an inflow of cash. The acquisition of the treasury stock would have involved a debit to the treasury stock but a credit to cash of 20000 So that would have been a use of cash. As we see on this slide, we show the cash receipts and the cash payments separately. So cash receipts from issuance of common stock would be an addition of 120000 and cash payment for purchase of treasury stock would be a cash use or a subtraction of 20,000. Now we have to analyze our retained earnings account in order to be able to determine if Shop Mart Inc. issued any dividends for 2024. We can do that by analyzing retained earnings. 
if we look at retained earnings, we see that at the beginning of the year, the balance in retained earnings was 80000 The balance at the end of the year was 110000 So we know that retained earnings increased by $30,000. We also know from our income statement that net income was 40000 So even if we were unable to look at all of the journal entries, we would be able to tell that dividends had been declared because retained earnings should have increased by 40000 but it only increased by 30000 So by using our equation, we can actually determine that ShopMart Inc. must have issued $10,000 of dividends for 2024. Now, we would show the cash payment of the dividends as a use of cash or as a subtraction in the financing activity section. So in this case, that would be shown as a negative $10,000. Now it's important that you make sure before you include cash payments for dividends that those dividends have actually been paid. Remember that retained earnings is debited even when the dividends are just declared. So in order to know that those dividends have actually been paid, we would have to look at the balance sheet and make sure that there is no balance in dividends payable. We know that Cash Shop Mart Inc. had no uh, dividends payable on their balance sheet, so we know that they had to have actually paid those dividends in cash. We would add up all of the amounts shown for in cash flows from financing activities to get the total, and in this case it would be a positive number, so it would be net cash provided by operating activities of $170,000. To complete the statement of cash flows, we have to compute the net change in cash and then the cash balances. To complete it, we would first add the operating activities, finance, investing activities, and financing activities cash flows, as shown on the slide. When we add those three amounts together, we get the net decrease in cash of $20,000. Then we add to that the beginning balance in cash of 42000 and that gives us the cash balance at December 31st, 2024 of $22,000. That should equal the amount of cash shown on the balance sheet at December 31st, 2024. The last step in preparing the statement of cash flows is to prepare the non-cash investing and financing activities section. So for this part, we are going to consider three non-cash transactions for another company, the Outdoors Inc. So during this year, Outdoors Inc. acquired 300, 000, a $300,000 building by issuing common stock. It acquired $70,000 in land by issuing notes payable and retired $100,000 in notes payable by issuing common stock. We're going to look at each one of these transactions to determine that these were non-cash investing and financing activities. First, let's look at the issuance of the common stock to acquire the building. This journal entry would have involved a debit to building for $300,000 and a credit to common stock for $300,000. The purchase of the building is an investing activity. The issuance of the common stock is a financing activity. However, there was no cash involved. Taken together, this transaction is a non-cash investing and financing activity. So this would not be reported in the cash flow statement, but would need to be reported in the non-cash investing and financing activities. The second transaction would, would have been recorded by debiting land for $70,000 and crediting notes payable for $70,000. 
The purchase of the land is an investing activity, and the issuance of the note is a financing activity. However, there was no cash paid or received. Taken together, this transaction is a non-cash investing and financing activity. The third transaction indicated that Outdoors retired $100,000 of their debt by issuing common stock. So the journal entry would have involved a debit to notes payable for $100,000 and a credit to common stock for $100,000. So the retirement of the note and the issuance of the common stock are both financing activities. But taken together, this transaction, even though it is two financing transactions, should be reported as a non-cash investing and financing activity. This slide shows the non-cash investing and financing activities for the Outdoors Inc. Each one of these would be listed separately and then we would get a total for the non-cash investing and financing activities. This information would either need to be reported as a separate schedule following the statement of cash flows or it can be disclosed in a note. And that is the conclusion of the second part of Learning Objective 14.2.